All right, go. Hello. I don't know how to start these things, so whatever. Uh, we, uh, you talk for a minute. Can you introduce this thing? You're good at this. What up? Exactly. Hello. What up, G plus? <laughs> Hey, should we do like a rant? Like, should we bitch about YouTube? <laughs> I don't, I don't, Going to like, no, uh, like, I know. I'm not care. I don't care about it. I honestly don't care. Um, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Google are changing the rules. Deal with it. <laughs> whoop, whoop. Whoop, whoop. That's the sound of that police. Hello, everybody. Uh, me and this uh, uh, decided to do a little video here showing you what. Hey y'all. Hey. Uh, showing everybody our recent finds. And then we're going to talk about some other stuff for no reason whatsoever. Um, so, yeah. This is like a shared, weird, combined vinyl finds video. So I'm gonna go first, uh, and um, first thing I've got <laughs> is this seven-inch uh, dog piss. It's called uh, "Lay Off the Turps." This is another Duncan Redmond's band. Um, uh, a couple of other people are in this, but uh, Duncan's in there, and uh, it just adds to the ever-growing snuff collection that I've got and, and Duncan Redmond's collection that I've got going on. It's on the Rugger Rugger, Rugger Bugger Records and uh, it's, a it's, it's very nice. Very nice. What is record I'm going to show though? Oh, why, 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 why. What's, uh, what's Duncan play on do in Dog Piss? Uh, drums. Drums? Yeah. 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 Um, I'm not sure anybody else in in the band who anybody else in the band is, but I'm going to go to the First thing is this: the dwarves. Uh, the dwarves. Uh, <coughs> is, the dwarves are younger and even better looking. This is a re recent reissue. Um, uh, two lot of boobs. Look at that. <laughs> Look at those boobs! Look at those boobs! Ha <laughs> ha! Teddies! Um, there's two records on this. There's the Dwarves are Young and Good Looking, and then there's Blag's solo album on here as well on the, on the second disc. Uh, I've got the black version on 180 gram, but uh, there's a coloured version out there which is quite uh, expensive right now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They're going for pretty big bucks. So is that like more like their epitaph kind of sound? Well, I guess that was epitaph, this wasn't it? Yeah, it's a album, yeah. Yeah. Uh, this has been re-released on Greedy Records. But, uh, yeah, this is the album that was released by Epitaph originally. So. So it kind of has that sound. Yeah. Yeah. I dig it then, probably. <laughs> you, uh, oh, you, you want me to show record? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to do this one first. All right, so this is a uh, gas coin, and I hope I'm pronouncing that right. This is actually uh, Peter, L. Peter's fan, uh, his first punk fan. Peter. And, uh, Peter. This is on Shield Recordings. The album's called Massive Attack. And I found this on Discogs from a guy that had a bunch of Dutch and punk, or Dutch and German punk. And they pressed it on like really heavy red vinyl. And I, I had mentioned, I had mentioned this on the, 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 I think on both groups. I think I posted it in the one by accident. And got, I just, I don't know. Hang on, it's fucked up. I gotta get back. Okay. So, check out the insert. For those of you guys that know Peter the Cowboy, this is, uh, <laughs> this is what Peter's supposed to look like right there, fucking hunched over a microphone. Nice. You've heard a couple tracks up. I can imagine him being, being, being oh, Grizzly. I've seen pictures. Oh yeah, I think he's a big dude too. He don't look that big, <laughs> but he, 
There was probably a time you don't want to run into Peter in an alley someplace. <laughs> Definitely. So what's this? Is it, uh, you know, is it any good? <laughs> it's. It, I got through the first side last night. And uh, it's actually really good, really good. Um, Peter's a good singer, man. He's really good. He's really aggressive, yeah. and I like that. I like that gravelly voice, hardcore stuff. Yeah. And you do too, for that matter. You would really dig it, in all honesty. Um, yeah, I got hold of a couple. Yeah, definitely. Dude, well, <laughs> I'm sorry, Pete. You didn't make any royalties or nothing on this because I bought it used. <laughs> I, apparently, they're they're pretty affordable. <laughs> <laughs> right now, I was able to. Uh, I think I paid five bucks for it plus shipping. So right. it's used, you know. Yeah. It, the guy sold it as a VG, but whatever. What do you got? Uh, Repress is this the Stooges' first album, The Stooges. Uh, this is on. It says it's on Electra. Um, I'm not sure when it's from, but uh, I'll show you the label. Um, there you go. <laughs> yeah. It's a repress of it, you know. I don't care. It sounds like the Stooges, and it, I mean, it is the Stooges, and you know, whatever. It's an album, though. I, I, really like, I really like this one. So I picked up the same album. I picked this up a couple weeks back. I've been getting yeah. into selling some shit that I'm not listening to. No punk, just some of that other shit. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I also picked up a copy of the uh, Stooges' first album. And the cover's kind of beat. Uh, no seam splits or nothing. But but this is what the label's supposed to fucking look like. <laughs> yeah. See, that's, you know. But even this, in the, in the U.S., there's really no way to tell what a first press is. Right. Uh, Mark, Dr. Deadwax, was working on the uh, fucking information, and there's so little about this record that it's very conflicting as to what a first pressing was. So I, I don't know what I got, really. Right. Still, it's original. But. Yeah. But you don't, what, you don't know if it's a first press or a second or whatever? Who gives a fuck? Uh, <laughs> exactly. That's what I'm saying. I've got a fucking German repress of a repress. I don't care. Um, I do not care. Next up, one of the best albums of the 90s, um, probably ever, uh, Green Day's Dookie. Um, which is, this is the Ernie one or whatever. Um, yeah, that's a German, that's a German first press. Is it? Yeah, it is. Right. Okay. You okay. fucker. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking for the same thing right now, and I'm not finding the price you'd pay him. <laughs> that's, uh, that's the label there. Re- reprise or reprise, whatever. I used to just love looking at the front cover of this. I had it as a poster when I was a kid. Oh, yeah. And, um, yeah. you know, just the artwork of it is, is awesome. It's Absolutely awesome. awesome. But, yeah. Right. Yeah, they played the rec- they played the record to death on the radio, but still, I mean, even going back and listening to it today after not hearing it so much, it's mm. it's so good, dude. It was so good when it came out, and it's still good now. Yeah. You know, anything anything after that record's pretty shitty, but well, Insomniac's good. Insomniac's the I think a little bit better than Dookie, but um, Dookie was the big hit, if you will. Sure. Um, uh, I think the same songs that you just forget about as well. They're on there like that FOD and uh, pulling teeth. Uh, yeah, pulling well. teeth. Um, but there's a yeah. This is it's, it's a good album. It's just you forget how good it is sometimes. But it's, yeah, it's a good album. Anyway, go on. Yeah, dude, that's a really nice copy too. I want that. I hope you uh, part ways with it soon. <laughs> This is uh, Funhouse. I picked this up. This is a Rhino reissue. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This is my least favorite of the Big Stooges records. You know, I, I, like, I love the first record. I like um, Raw Power. I don't like any of the new shit they did. That's fucking just terrible, in my opinion. 
but that, it's, it's worse. Fun House is my second favourite album, I'd say. Uh, the first, the, the self-titled, then Fun House, then Raw Power. I don't really like Raw Power that much. I don't like Search and really Destroy. about it. See, that blows my mind because Raw Power to me is the most aggressive of their three records. Um, yeah, but I like I like the sound of Fun House. It's um, it's trippy as fuck, but yet not um, fairy pants music. You know, like not like um, really soft and not ornate music to go along with the trippy vibe. Yeah, <laughs> there's none of that fucking bullshittery going on. Um, there's just um, raw like riffs with a fucking weird psychedelic vibe going on as well. So you know. That's why I kind of like it like that. I like it. Yeah, see, that's kind of what, that's how I feel about the first two albums. They had that heavy psych influence, and it works for them, because they were still Detroit, Motor City, middle, you know, early 70s, bad times in the States, typically. And uh, Detroit has always been one of those cities that's just been fucked up. I mean, <laughs> they're, they're, they're fucking broke now, and it was just difficult then. <laughs> Plus, it fucking snows nine months out of the year. It's miserable. <laughs> what else you got? What else? Uh, next up, uh, No Effects album uh, that's a, a compilation of sorts. Uh, I'm pretty sure... Uh, well, no. This, this is the one compilation that I haven't got that makes you know is made up by other seven inches and and, and different ones. Uh, it's called uh, Twenty Two Songs That Weren't Good Enough to Go on Our Other Records. Um, it's on. Fa- uh, some of the other songs were released on Epitaph and whatnot, but it's, it was this album was released on Fat Wreck. This is the inside inlay and whatnot. Um, the, that's the label for it. Yeah, it's uh, it's a really good album. This it's just like I say, it's a compilation of various stuff, but um, it's not a compilation of stuff that's already on Seven Inches and uh, other uh, records. So I thought I'd get it. So let me ask you this: since I'm I'm starting to buy some No Effects shit now, and we'll and we'll do this in another video or something. Yeah, because could, we could go on and on for days, but. The 45 to however many song comp? Yeah. Was that ever pressed on vinyl or is that CD only? That's CD only, that. yeah. Is the, the, that wasn't on vinyl. Okay, fuck. From, from what I think, from what I can remember anyway. Um, but you still need it, right? Um, well, if you've... If you've um, because it's the rest of it is just uh, it is albums it is music you can get off seven inches so it's like Surfer and it's Fuck the Kids and it's um, I think that's it to be honest I think it's just Surfer and Fuck the Kids and a couple of other seven inches thrown in a couple of other like Tim and the Turtles on there as well so yeah there's a couple of other things on there in fact Tim and the Turtles on this so, I picked this up. Yeah? Did you have more to add? No, no, go, go, no, go. Okay, I'm just going to barrel right on through you then. <laughs> I picked up a repress of uh, MC5, Kick Out of Jams. And, uh, you know, this, the, the, this recording on this record was never really good. And it's a shame that it wasn't you know like a studio effort yeah because the sounds just shit and it's not depressing or anything i'm sure they all sound like shit <laughs> but it's it's essential stuff man it's good yeah it, it, it is well, a good record it, the, the, there's some really great songs like kick out the jams obviously um but yeah i've not got it yet I mean, I, i'll pick it up at some point but not yet yeah, well, you'll probably find a note to piss me off, too, because I was looking for two years for an original, and I couldn't find one, man. <laughs> so I just said, fuck it, and I don't care, whatever. It's it's Rhino. It's good enough for me. Yeah. <laughs> um, right, my last one. Um, Physical Fatness, volu- Fat Music, Volume 3. Um, the best fat music compilation 
<laughs> there is. Uh, it's got Snow Funny twice. Okay, what well, anyone says, this is the best compilation. Uh, no effects are on here. Me first, and they give me give me screeching weasel, high standards, um, fucking snuff, uh, tilt propaganda. The dickies are on here. No use for a name. Swinging up others. I keep saying fans' names, and they're all amazing. Uh, good riddance. Strung out. Goober Patrol. 88 fingers, Louis. The list goes on. That is the greatest. That rap compilation there is. That is it. You're on. You're on, dude. That is the second best record. Physical physical fatness is the greatest comp on fat. I mean, how can you deny that? That's physical fatness. No, no, I'm talking about the first one. I'm talking about Chuck. I'm talking about, uh, what's it called? Fucking. Survival of the fattest. That's it, survival of the, the fattest. The blue one with the evolution of man on the face. Yes. Yeah, alright. No, you're wrong. That's the best. No, you're, you're no, wrong. That had, dude, that had high standard, that had that the single uh, Nick Northern on it. That's snuff, that's snuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, snuff are on here. Whatever happened to the lightning ads is on here. Come on, whatever uh, happened to that's the lightning ads. You know it. Um, I do. Plus, there's a propaganda song that never appeared on the album. Do you know about it? True? Propaganda song, True. Have you ever heard that no, one? No, I do not. I have not. That's, um, it starts off with them talking. Um, you just want everyone to look the same. And it's all like that, you know, at the start. It's a really good song, really good propaganda song. And it was never on any album. Um, but I was just wondering if you had it, if you had heard it on any EPs or anything like that. No, I need it now. I've never heard that track. I fucking didn't know it was on there. Well, there you go. There you go. Because usually Fat would just pull something out of the catalog and just throw them together. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or like a B-side or something like that. Um, right. Yeah. So here's a Manchester band. Now, <clears throat> this is a grail for me. I don't have many grails in my collection. You know, I've, I've got... Maybe five or six, so I'm gonna use the word grail because I fucking hate it, but <laughs> this is the Charlatans, uh, does not say UK, and this was, uh, released in 1990, god, it had to be 93, but this is on, um, this isn't, this is on Beggar's Bank with German press, it's not the, uh, um, Situation 2 UK press, which I still want. But I fucking love this record. Yeah. And then, uh, here's the inner. And I've looked for this record for fucking years, and I finally found one that was the right price. Cause in the States, they're always fetching 30 bucks or more. So that came along, plays great. But, so how the fuck did you live in Manchester, or 15 minutes, 20 minutes outside of Manchester, and not get exposed to that kind of shit? What, to the Shallons? Yeah. Oh. Um. Or not like it, at least. I mean, that is a fucking mind-blowing record. Uh, well, I've never heard that record, right? but I know the Shallons, um, and they're okay. They're an alright band. I'm not really into them or anything, but they're, they're, they're um, one of the best, better of a bad bunch of Britpop bands, though. They came, uh, really. Like, uh, you know, like, your you, you suede and your... Um, you know, sway. So you don't like this? You don't like the Stone Roses or the Happy Mondays? Or? Uh, no, no, I don't mind them because the Manchester bands were all all okay. Is when like uh, like Blur and um, Suede and uh, Menswear and Elastica, uh, Ele Elastica, Kaniki, just shit bands started coming about. And um, the Shallons, yeah, they were the, uh, the best of a bad bunch, the better of a bad bunch, you know, out of a bad bunch anyway. Well, here's the deal with the Charlatans. If you listen to this album... I love the way you say that. Oh, Jesus. This is just fucking, do I need a dictionary? So here's the deal. Here's the deal. You know what I mean, fuck. Here's the deal. Tell me the deal. What's I the deal? I can't get the shit back in the bag, dude. <laughs> 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 
Here's the deal. What's the deal? If you play bass, yeah, right. You try to semi-professionally, <laughs> almost. Kind of. So when you listen to the bass playing on this record, and it's all. It's very psychedelic. A lot of their other shit was just that it was shit. But this album, for some reason, it's dancey, but it's not drum machines and shit. It's actual drum kit. And it's actually the bass that kind of sets that groove. And there's all this fucking Hammond organ in there, like swirling around and fucking psychedelic guitars. The vocals would bug you because they're kind of, you know, they got that brick pop, Stone Roses yeah. kind of vibe to them. Yeah. But... I mean, it's essential. If you can find a fucking... If you go in the Dropbox, I'll Dropbox it. But you really just need to give it a shot. Okay. I mean, it's essential 90s fucking Manchester. Well, I, like I say, I've never heard that album, so, yeah, I wouldn't mind listening to that. Uh, that one. Because um, all I know is really the song uh, One to Another and uh, a couple of other songs. Uh but, uh, yeah, that, um, that, that's about it. Dude, was that your 8-bit ringtone? <laughs> <laughs> that's the house phone. I don't I, oh. I don't know why they've set that ringtone, but um, <laughs> we, we can't change it, so. That's that the shit house ringtone. Sounds like an 80s Nintendo game is loading up in my house any time. That's all I like got. I felt like I was playing Pitfall on Atari. <laughs> <laughs> so that's all I've got to show new records wise. Uh, yeah, I'm out too. Yeah. We should just babble about something though. Yeah. That well, way people have to sit and watch through it. Exactly. Or fast forward. Well, we're already at 25 minutes. So fuck it. Yeah, let's go for another 25 minutes. Uh, <laughs> why not? Hang on, uh, dude, I got the cotton mouth. Hang on one second, dude, before we go on. I gotta get something in the time. <laughs> I'm just thinking I've got a little bit of a giant, maybe. Um, so, uh, we pulled, uh, well, I pulled out some records from Lookout Records, because I think if we're going to do this, like, show our uh, records off, uh, our new finds off together, we may as well talk about a pump record label at the end maybe and show off um, or show some, sorry some records from that label so you chose did, we, did I choose this one or did you choose it no I chose it because I want to see what you have for pressings because I'm just getting fired up on ordering this, the, the essential lookout shit for me right. and I got a couple coming but ok well yeah lookout records then so, um, you know a bit more about Lookout look out than I do, so why don't you just wax about Lookout for a moment? All right, so when I got into punk rock in the 90s, I was at first exposed to the Lookout bands. And more, more specifically, um, which I, I talked about in that one video we did, Screeching Weasel and the Queers, and that, you know, really kind of turned me on to Lookout. And then Green Day's Lookout albums that I kind of discovered next. Because um, I think Dookie had come out, and I didn't. it just launched, and I had just seen Longview, the video for Longview, on 120 Minutes. So I was like, wow, this fucking band's good. So I bought Dookie, of course. And then I went back and got the two Lookout albums at the time. I had them both on vinyl. Um, the three full lengths, 39 Smooth and Kerplunk. And you have a copy of Kerplunk. Let's see, let's see that. Just gonna show everybody what that's all about. Yeah, uh, there it is, Kerplunk. That's the back of it with, uh, look out 56 and the, the dress there. Uh, no barcode. <laughs> so that's, that's that press. Of, of okay. Now, I gotta tell you, with Green Day, and it's like we, we got into with the Dookie thing, the people that fucking just hate the band so much that they say, I'll never fucking buy a Green Day album because it's shit. Because they, they apparently, that's fucking nice. That's really nice. That's number 17, yeah. 
So if we're talking about Green Day, I may as well show what I've got there. That's and that's the label for it. With the camp of on on the other side. Oh yeah, go on. Nice. <laughs> Sorry, carry on. What, what were you saying? Well, you got Slappy too. No, I've just that's it. That's uh, that's all I've got. A uh, thousand dollars. I've not got Slappy. I know. Yeah. I know C11s has Nike has, but I haven't. I'm not. Uh, I tend to pick it up yet. I can't remember if Slappy was better than one thousand hours or not. One of those two is pretty beat. Um, and the Sweet Children EPs really kind of. Those are their Green Day's first demos. And they're really kind of rough. They're good, actually. I mean, the band, they're one of those fucking bands that was just good from the get-go. I mean, they got in the warehouse, and they banged out good songs, and they were catchy right away. And even catchier in their lookout days, for me at least, than what they would do with the major labels later on after Dookie, when they got super fucking famous, you know, Nimrod and Insomniac and Warning and fucking... Those three last turds they just put out that are complete fucking dog shit. Oh, uh, Unos Dos Tres. I've not even listened. I listened to like a couple of tracks on one of them. No, no, thank you. No, I don't Dude, anymore. Can I hear? Can I hear your? Can I hear your Spanish one more time? <laughs> Unos Dos Tres. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. That's rough. <laughs> don't ever try to fake that one, dude. I don't, think, I don't think I'll get away with it, to be quite honest. I don't, I don't think you, so. you don't have much use for Spanish on, on in the UK, huh? No, no. <laughs> um, yeah, we've got we've got no use for it, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's Green Day. <clears throat> now let's yeah. do some screeching weasel. Show me some screeching weasel. Okay, um, I've only got one screeching weasel. You fuck. Where is it? <laughs> My brain hurts. Um, 1991, lookout number 50. Um, it's this one. It's got a really cool like inlay with it, with a load of uh, lookout records. And I was looking for some before that I'd, I had, or you know, I've got. And uh, I've just realised I've got that rancid seven inch, but uh, I've left it upstairs, so I've not got it on me. But uh, I, I do have it. You know what you need though. Before I forget, is see if it's listed on there. There's a comp called a slice of lemon, which has uh, rancid's first song. But they weren't called Rancid. They, it was in between Op Ivy and Rancid. They made up a moniker. The slice that's the one. That's one. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So that's got a Rancid song you'll never hear anywhere else on it. All oh, right, sweet. Well, I shall, I shall pick that up. Most. Well, I'll try anyway. But um, I know. Uh, I know. It's, uh, there's a lot of Pansy division on Lookout. Um, I know, I think Rob from Boston, Paniques, he's got a lot of Pansy Division stuff. Um, I've heard a little bit, and they're quite, what I've heard, I quite like, so I might have to try and get a bit more in. Uh, yeah. Well, I'll tell you from, from, with the early lookout, from catalog number 100 back, yeah. aside from the Blatt stuff, which you would probably like the Blatt stuff, because it's kind of like gutter mouth. Um, it's just kind of really bad. <laughs> but, but, yeah, I know you like gutter mouths. <laughs> yeah, I do. It's a good band. I don't know why people don't like them. They're a good band. So if you have those first hundred catalog numbers, and I'd like to collect them all, it's kind of like one of my goals sure. on Lookout. You know, original presses. Yeah. You're, you're so, there's so many good fucking albums. The Queers, um, Love Songs for the Retarded, Grow Up. Screeching Weasel, now you have My Brain Hurts, and if you dig that one, you need the album prior to that, Boogada Boogada Boogada. <laughs> and, cause that, 
I mean, it's it's so fucking good. I mean, it's better than that. And then even their next album, Anthem for a New Tomorrow, uh, that follows, that's good. But I think with The Lookouts, even going all the way back to the original band, Larry Livermore's band, The Lookouts, right? it's just stellar punk rock. And Trey Cool was the drummer in The Lookouts, if you didn't know that. Right, right. Um, I didn't even know that it came from, to be honest. I've never heard of The Lookouts, so I just thought they were labeled... You know, I didn't know there was a band involved. Now, that's lookout number one is uh, essential, essential, hard to find. Um, but just collecting that whole first, and there's so much good shit after that point, too, but then you kind of get into some of the stuff where it's not that pop punk kind of stuff you're looking for, that Ramonzi influenced stuff. Yeah. It's a little harder edge. You're getting into, like, some later Donna stuff that I'm not really into. Um, but definitely those first hundred numbers in that catalog. Um, I have this one. This is the only lookout I own. This is catalog number 161. Jesse sent this to me. Um, this is The Crumbs. The album is called Shakespeare. No, it's called The Crumbs. Wow, what a fucking retard. I thought it was Shakespeare. I thought that might have been the 7 inch. So, now this also has that cool sleeve where you get, you know, the fucking yeah. uh, catalog like you were talking about. Yeah. And then the insert. This one is, um, these fucking guys. Now, these were a local band for me. So, we used to hang out at their warehouse and shit, and, uh, that was like, we thought they were the best fucking, we thought they were fucking rock stars when they got signed to Recess first, and then they put out some shit on Lookout. <laughs> but, again, if you dig the Ramones, you would dig the Crumbs. I mean, it's just, it's that kind of a deal. So, so, well, I've got a few more Lookout records. Um, I'll start with this one. Uh, this is um, Lookout number three. Um, Operation Ivy, Hectic, CP. <laughs> uh, I don't know which press this is, right? I, I, I don't think it's in a first press, I think it's the second press of it. Uh, there's the uh, inlay of it. That's the back. Lottenville address. It, it's Lottenville, dude. Why, would, why do you think it's a second press? I think it's the first press, I think, just says look out. I don't think it says records underneath it, from what I've read. Um, but um, it comes with this. Oh, bugger. There's like um, inlay. So that's part of the inlay uh, there. And then there's another part there and whatnot. And then, um, what kind of records one do we. Dude, you might be right, but finding a Lottenville Hectic EP is not easy to do. Right? I mean, I've been looking for them, and they're fucking expensive, man. Yeah. Well, I just thought I had... Um, I, I, I don't know, because it's... I, I'm in the UK. It's not like one of the original one of these is going to turn up. It's going to be a repress or something else, you know. It's not going to be an original, I don't think. But then again, you never know. It could be. Uh, stranger things have happened. So... Um, yeah, I mean, if it is, it is, if there's a repress of it, I don't care. I've still got that, and it's pretty fucking awesome anyway. Uh, next, next one, I'll show this one first. Um, Mr. T Experience, um, a night shot at the Thrill Factory. Uh, this is uh, Lookout 144, I think. And again, inlay there, and then the, the, uh, uh, catalog there and also uh, Revenge is Sweet and So You this is on Lookout as well and um, this is um oh shit uh, Lookout 180 so doesn't have the thing doesn't have the catalog it's a bit shit um I've also got this Citizen Fish uh, Millennium Madness uh, this is a split release with um, Blurg and Lookouts. Um, and this, I don't know if it has a Lookout number, per se. Oh, yeah, it is. Lookout number one, two, three. Yep. 
So that's pretty cool. And then um, I forgot I had this one, and then I, I, I remembered uh, nuisance uh, confusion hill. Uh, I've never heard that one. It's it's very grunge. It doesn't really? fit. It doesn't fit. Look out at all. It's, it's look out number forty eight. Wow. Yeah. So and it just doesn't really fit what the rest of Lookout is at all. Um, but, you know, everyone's got on that pop-punk style, and then you put this on, you're like, what? What's going on here? But, yeah, it's, it's, it's a very weird standout record that's on Lookout, very strange. But I, I had it on before. It's very good, very good record. Very slow, but uh, pretty good. Yeah, confusion now. Well, there's a there's like a um, few other bands that were kind of untypical for Lookout. Uh, who was one I was just thinking of? That my brain just ate it. Um, Avail, you know, if you listen to the really early Avail stuff, you get kind of a punk, pop punk kind of vibe. But then you almost get into like a post hardcore kind of vibe as the band got ready to leave Lookout. You know, it didn't have that Riverdale screeching weasel kind of sound to it. Never really did, but yeah. Um, another one, because there's some definite, there's some definite turds, don't get me wrong. They, they did, after Green Day broke and money started coming in the label, they got a little more available with signing some questionable bands. <laughs> and I don't know. Well, I mean, you look at this, this catalog that is on there, and to be honest, I can't really see a bad record on there, or a record that I wouldn't mind owning, you know, or listening to at least. Um, they all seem pretty interesting, and, and, and the bands, I've either heard of them or I've heard something about them, and, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't mind getting my hands on, on a copy of pretty much everything that's on there, to be honest. Yeah, I fucking agree with you. I think I would collect every lookout piece that I found that I could afford, you know, as, as they trickled into the record store. I mean, it's just, it's a good label. They were consistent. It's kind of like fat in the mid nineties, you know, early nineties, they were just consistently putting out good records and you could buy everything as it was released. It was pretty good shit. Um, some notable exceptions, but what, what can you do about that? Yeah. Um, um, Right, well, that's it. That's it. Um, call it a day there. Uh, right, well, I, I, we'll do this again next month, maybe, uh, and um, talk about uh, what we've got uh, in the month coming up. Have you, you've got some no effects stuff coming, you say? I got a shitload of no effects coming. So I think what we'll do is we'll we'll fucking barrage the VC with a pointless no effects video that runs about forty five minutes. Nobody will give a fuck about. That sounds like an excellent excellent idea to me. Um, I could talk about no effects for at least forty five minutes, if not longer. Um, it'll give me a chance to show all the stuff I've got as well, because I can't be asked doing a no effects collection video because I have got. Everything now, pretty much, uh, studio album wise, anyway. Um, so, yeah, that's a good chance to do that. Yeah, fuck it, why not? Um, what was I going to say? Oh, next weekend, I've got one unit playing for me in Oldham. Oh, that's next weekend? Yeah, that's next Saturday. So, um, I might try and film a chat with them or something like that and um, put that up. But uh, if not, I'll I'll do something, but yeah, yeah. But go and yeah, go and check out Wonk Unit. If you've never heard Wonk Unit before, go and go and check them out. They're a great band from the UK. Not you, Damien. I'm telling the VC that because <laughs> all the, like, this video is for them, not us. Oh, well. We got that stuff in charge. Remember? <laughs> So my wife was just telling me that I tainted her football cup today. You did? Because <laughs> I drank out of her fucking. She went to Florida State. I fucking hate Florida State. So they're 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 like number two right now. 
college football. I fucking hate them. I hope they lose. So I was drinking coffee out of her mug this morning, and she's like, what the fuck? <laughs> you do you curse my shit. <laughs> that's, fo- that, that, that's football with pads, though. That's how we do it. Yeah. yeah you mean um, soft man's rugby? Oh, wow. 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 Yeah. Really? Did you go there? That, that, well, yeah. That's that's what it is. Soft man's rugby. You gotta wear pads and helmets and shit like that. Just play rugby. Just play the game properly. How it's supposed to be made. Rugby league, not rugby union, because rugby union is glorified cross country. Rugby league is a proper man's game. And uh, the World Cup's going on at the moment in England. Look at my eyes. Oh shit. But let me let me explain this to you, just to debunk your whole fucking theory there. Now in Middle Earth. In Middle Earth, you're not a real big basketball country, you know? No. So, I can't... In the States, we have this band that runs along the Mississippi where boys are huge. These kids in college are fucking monsters. And it runs straight up into Wisconsin and fucking Minnesota and Nebraska. I mean, just start right right to... So, here's my argument for you is you need fucking pound. You need pads. If you've got six foot eight motherfuckers that weigh 315 pounds, well, that doesn't help you any, but banging into each other out there. All I'm saying is, all I'm saying is, um, wearing pads is for girls. Um, wow, wow. You, you, I, you, just, you just need to just play the game properly, you know, if you played it rugby, passing backwards rather than forwards. Like, you know, it's just, it's just more of a man's game. Speaking of which, um, I'm going to go and uh, knock some balls about later on, on the pitch and put Aria. Yeah. It's getting golf time. I, I haven't played in a year, man. All right, let's wrap this up. Yeah. Uh, until next time, um, may the force be with you. Uh, and boop, boop, um, boop. I have the power and all that jazz. Uh, um, right, yeah. We'll do this again next t- next one for summit. Until then. Peace out, BC. Indeed. Yeah. Keep it G plus, baby. G plus. <laughs> <laughs> G plus. <laughs> hey, by the way, I'm starting a new channel. It's going to be over like <laughs> daily motion or something, and it's going to be called the fucking the 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 fucking BC sucks or something. I don't know. Dude. <laughs> the anti Google group. <laughs> yeah, fuck, fuck Google. It'll be called fuck Google plus. Fuck Google. Right, until next time, in a bit.